How to Mitigate CVE-2024-23897. On January 24th, 2024, a security advisory was released by the Jenkins community and CloudBees. Two of the items in that security advisory apply specifically to Jenkins Core, which is what CloudBees CI is based on. The proper remediation to take care of these two items is to upgrade to 2.426.3.3. However, if you're not immediately able to upgrade to 2.426.3.3, we strongly recommend administrators apply the workaround that we're going to take a look at in this video. Here's today's starting point. I have a CloudBees CI Operations Center and two client controllers. They're all version 2.426.2.2. In other words, the versions that we're going to be taking a look at are the versions that are prior to the new version that shipped on January 24th. Now, before I take you through the workaround, let me take you through the security advisory. The link to the security advisory is down in the description. The top two items in the security advisory are the two items that we're going to be taking a look at. The workaround that we're going to be applying applies to both of these items. So for this first item, which is 23897, it has been classified as a critical. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and read through all the items here, but I want to go ahead and go down to the fix and workaround section. So if we go down to the bottom of this item, what we'll see is we have a fixed description, which again, the proper fix is to go ahead and upgrade Cloud BCI to 2.426.3.3. If you cannot do that, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and apply the workaround that's documented in these two knowledge base articles. Now, I want to go ahead and call out the note that's below the workaround. Disabling the CLI is only intended as a short-term workaround, even if you don't use the CLI today. Now, the other item, which is right below, it's 23898, is classified as a high. Again, the workaround for both 97 and 98 are the same workaround. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and disable the Jenkins CLI across all controllers. Now, we're going to do that first from the Operations Center, then once that's complete, we will actually go ahead and disable the CLI on the Operations Center itself. So let's first take a look at disabling the CLI across all controllers. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a cluster operation on the Operations Center and then applying that cluster operation to all of the controllers that are connected to this Operations Center. Now, again, in this scenario, I have a single Operations Center with two connected client controllers. If we go back and take a look at the Knowledge Base article, it walks us through the setup of a cluster operation in case you've never done that before. And then we're going to be pasting in a script. Now let's take a quick look at this script. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for the init Groovy D directory inside of our client controllers. If it doesn't exist, then we're going to create that directory. That goes inside of your Jenkins home. From that point, we'll go ahead and create the file. We're going to name it cli-shutdown.groovy. And then inside of that file, this is the contents of the file. So when this runs, it's going to disable any of the HTTP CLI related endpoints. And it's also going to go ahead and disable the CLI access over SSH. We'll take that information. We will create the file. Once the file is created, then we'll actually just go ahead and execute that script. So what we're going to expect on our controllers is when we go and take a look inside of the Jenkins home, we will then see the init Groovy D directory with this file inside of it. Now let's go ahead and go take a look at our controllers and see how they're set up right now. Now, if we go ahead and go take a look inside of CC1, and CC2 is set up exactly the same as CC1, we're going to go inside of Manage Jenkins. Now, since we're going to be disabling the Jenkins CLI, let's go ahead and verify the Jenkins CLI panel that's on Manage Jenkins. When we take a look at that, that page loads up. Keep that in mind because we expect this to no longer load. For SSH, what we're going to do is go to Manage Jenkins and we're going to go into Security. We'll scroll down to the section that is named SSH Server. Now, in more recent versions, when this is installed on the controllers, the SSH Server is disabled by default. For this example that I'm showing you, I have enabled it to listen on port 2222. Now, again, it doesn't really matter because the script's going to take care of it anyway. But I wanted you to see what's going to happen in case you do have this actually enabled. Now, I want to go ahead and call out one more thing inside of Manage Jenkins. You'll notice an item at the top of the Manage Jenkins page. It says one or more security fixes have been published for version, in this case, 2.426.2.2, or its related plugins. So if we click on More Info, 
What we're going to see is the security warnings inside of Beekeeper telling us about these two items. 3314 is the first item in the security advisory, and 3315 is the second item in the security advisory. This is just another way to take a look at what's going on inside of your controller. One final thing before we create the cluster operation. Let's go over into our shell, and I'm inside the Jenkins home directory for CC2. So if we take a look here, and we go up into the HIJ area, we'll notice that there is no init.groovy.d directory existing inside of CC2. So we took a look from a UI perspective inside CC1. Now we're taking a look inside the Jenkins home of CC2. Just take my word for it, both CC1 and CC2 are exactly the same. So now let's go ahead and go into the operation center and create the cluster operation. So we'll go back over to our documentation and I'll quickly call out here, we're gonna create a new item. We're gonna call it disable CLI. We're gonna select all the controllers. We're gonna select from operation center root. That way we're looking for all controllers that are connected. Then we're gonna add a step and the step that we're gonna add is execute Groovy script on controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this script. Let's go back over to our operation center. We'll say new item. We're gonna call it disable CLI. Click on cluster operations. Now again, I'm working with Cloud BCI for traditional platforms. The steps you're gonna follow for Cloud BCI for modern cloud platforms are exactly the same. The only difference is I'm able to SSH into those controllers and take a look at my Jenkins home. You may or may not be able to do that within your environment, but all the steps are exactly the same. Let's click on okay. Let's go ahead and select add operation. We'll select controllers. Under target controllers, we're gonna say from operation center root. I'm going to go ahead and add a filter, any controller that is online. And I'm going to add a step. And the step that we're gonna add is execute Groovy script on controller. Effectively, what we're doing is we are loading up inside of those controllers, the script console and running the script that we're getting ready to apply. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And let's make sure that everything that we pasted in is what we expect. So we see our imports at the top, and we see our shell evaluate at the bottom. If we double check this, we see imports at the top, we see shell at the bottom, all that looks good. Let's go ahead and click on save. Now when we click on save, that does not automatically run it. It's just like a job. We haven't clicked on build now yet, but instead of build now, what we see, and again, according to the documentation, we're going to click on run. So let's go ahead and click on run for this, and this will take a few moments. So don't walk away, but don't be surprised if this takes maybe one to two to possibly even three minutes. But again, your controllers are not going to go offline. Let's go ahead and click on run. Now that the cluster operation is completed, let's take a look at the logs for both CC1 and CC2. Log for CC1, we can see that it started the operation on CC1. It created the directory for us for init groovy D, and it also created the file inside of that directory. If we were to take a look at the output for CC2's log, we see the exact same thing. So now let's go ahead and take a look back at our CC1 controller. Now remember, we saw two different items, our Jenkins CLI panel inside of Manage Jenkins, and then also we saw a value inside of the SSH server inside the security panel. So let's go ahead and go to Manage Jenkins. Let's go ahead and go into security first, and let's go ahead and scroll down to the SSH server section. And now instead of the fixed radio button being selected with 22222, we now see that it's been disabled. Let's go ahead and go back to Manage Jenkins. Let's scroll down to Jenkins CLI. And now we're getting a 404 page for the Jenkins CLI because we've disabled that section as well. So we disabled two items, disabled SSH server, and we disabled the Jenkins CLI section. One more thing to check. Let's go ahead and go back over to the shell for CC2. And if we go ahead and refresh our file listing here, we'll scroll back up. Now what we see is our init groovy D directory. And if we CD into that, we now see our CLI shutdown groovy file, which we just created through the cluster operation. Okay, we've created the cluster operation on the operation center, applied all the changes to our controllers. So not only did we reapply it live through the groovy script, since that groovy script exists now inside of init groovy D, anytime the controller is restarted, it will always make sure that both of those items are shut down. Let's go do the same thing for the operation center. So we'll go back over to our operation center and we're gonna follow basically the same steps. But let's take a look at the documentation that was linked off for Operation Center. 
And you can see this in the workaround. At the last sentence, we see applying this workaround does not require a Jenkins restart. For instructions, see disable Jenkins CLI for Clavi's operation center and disable Jenkins CLI across all controllers. We just did the latter. Let's go ahead and work on the former. So we take a look at disable Jenkins CLI. This looks very similar to what we just did. What we're looking at right now is what would happen if we just ran it and disabled it live. That's what this top section is. If we wanted to just go ahead and apply this quickly live without creating that file inside of a knit groovy D, this is what we would do. But it's called out here, this will not survive a restart. So in order to disable the CLI on startup using a groovy script, we can create a post initialization script and run this in the script console as well. So let's follow this step here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy this section. You can also use, in case you didn't see it, the copy that's in the bottom right hand corner. Let's go over to our operation center, manage Jenkins. Now, before we actually run the script, let's go ahead and verify the setup that we have right now. We can see on the operation center, we have our Jenkins CLI. We click on that, it loads. We don't expect that to load once we apply the script. Also, inside of security, let's check for SSH server. Now, what you'll notice on my operation center is I do not have SSH server installed. So although we're gonna run the script, Notice when we run it that it's checking to see, hey, does SSHD exist or not? If it doesn't, it just sort of ignores it. So that's our use case here. But regardless, we want to make sure if it does exist, we go ahead and disable it. Let's go back to Manage Jenkins. Let's go ahead and go down to our script console. Let's paste in the live script. So this is the live part of what actually happens. So if we go ahead and click on Run, again, this could take a few moments. Now that it completed, we see there's no result actually shown here. Let's go ahead and go into Manage Jenkins. We already know that we don't need to check on SSH because it wasn't installed. If we go down to Jenkins CLI, click on this, then we get the 404 page there as well. What we need to go ahead and finally do, because we don't want to have those come back to life in case of an operation center restart. So we want to go ahead and take this script. Again, I'll scroll to the bottom, click on the copy. What we're doing here is what we saw for our cluster operation, we're gonna create the file in the init groovy D location, and then just write the file into that what we just ran. So let's go ahead and go back over into our operation center, manage Jenkins, we'll go down to script console. Now with this, all we're doing is creating the file. We are actually not gonna be executing the file, so this should happen immediately. Let's go over to our shell for the operation center. If we take a look in the HIJ area, we don't see the init groovy D directory. Let's go back over to our operation center, click on run. Now that the script completed, let's go ahead and take a look at our shell for the operation center. We'll do a LL here again. And now what we're gonna see is our init groovy D and inside of init groovy D, what we're gonna see is our CLI shutdown groovy script. So now at this point, if the operation center or if any of the controllers restart, the disabling of the CLI for both HTTP and SSH will still be applied even on those restarts. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.